People have been doing adaptation in those semi-arid areas for generations, hundreds of years. But what we realized was that we did not have large-scale adaptation. Hence, the project ASA, which stands for Adaptation at Scale in Semi-Arid Regions. It is a multi-country, multi-continent project. So the project has sites in India, in Southern Africa, and in East Africa, as well as in West Africa. In Ghana, we focused on agricultural intensification, and we focused on the upper west corner of Ghana, on the border of Burkina Faso. Here we actively went to carry out research on specific topics and issues that had been identified by the people of the area of concern to them. We selected two key uh, districts, the Laura and the Nandom districts in the Upper West region of Ghana, where we did intensive work. So we've looked at topics um, concerning gendered issues, um, what kind of groups are there. Sometimes people think it's male and female. But within that, there are subsections. For example, you can have a married woman, a single woman, a young woman, an old woman, a divorced woman. So all these have different vulnerabilities. So that's one is area we looked at. Asa Ghana's research work, social differentiation and gender, is one of the components. It's also a cross-cutting team. And that we want to challenge the assumptions that women, for example, are usually tagged as the vulnerable but we know that there are various categories of women and even men that sometimes it's not shown that there are various categories of people who are vulnerable. So we use the intersectional framework and that is trying to look at whether ethnicity, whether maybe marriage or migrant status, education, your occupation, how does that intersect with a social relationship at home? and to cause your vulnerability to climate change. We looked at issues of migration, because we know in the north, people move, whether seasonally or permanently, how does that influence their households? With migration, what we specifically sought out to do was to find out the reasons why people are moving and the reason why people are also choosing to stay. So in that context, we realized that people are moving for many reasons, including moving as a result of failing agriculture activities, which is being impacted by climate change and the likes. We've looked at ecosystem services, so those who um, work with shear nuts, those who work with uh, non-timber forest products, um, those who, so water access, so the water resource, things like that. So what are the ecosystem services that are there and how do people depend on these? The approach we used at University of Ghana was to carry out this research by graduate students as part of the attainment of postgraduate degrees. The way we, we did this was to provide support for the research work from the ASA project in terms of funding, logistics, so that they'll be able to focus more on the problem rather than trying to find money. We have produced from the project about 16 MPhil students and by the time the project ends we'd have got about six PhD students, all of whom have done in-depth work on some aspect. Now, these students did not only come from the Institute for Environmental and Sanitation Studies under the Environmental Science Graduate Program, but we also had people from uh, animal science looking at veterinary aspects or agricultural economics. We've um, identified three key areas that we are working on. One is the research aspect of it, and most of it is done by the students. The second aspect of it is what we call research into use. 
It's a term that the project actually developed, which looks at how findings from research can actually be applied uh, practically, come up with actual solutions for those who need it. We had a different approach to that, where um, we had what we call the transformative scenario planning process, the TSP process. And the idea is if you want to make change, if you want people to think into the future, you have to let them start imagining what that future might be or the different possibilities of a future and how you can arrive at those um, futures. And then the third aspect of it, uh, which actually comes out of the research into use, is actual um, implementation of some solutions on the ground. We have a, a number of programs that we, we, we set off, which is the GLASS, looking at uh, women groups, try to form a, a, a platform for them so that those small self-help groups that the women have formed to support themselves can actually have a kind of uh, coordinated, structured um, platform that they can interact with each other and source either for funds or opportunities or business, you know, business networks, but they are a consolidated group. Um, we also worked with irrigation farmers, the same idea, bringing them all together letting them understand what is available for them, not just word of mouth, but something that is an official uh, channel that they, they, they can get information from. We try to be innovative. Nowadays, we are moving into technology, so everybody has a mobile phone and uh, a whole lot of different types of apps. So how do we get information to them? Uh, so there's uh, a mobile app which is the Adaptation Hub. One of the things that we are also quite proud of is the establishment of the climate advisory centers that are based within key institutions within the two districts. A lot of information has been provided in these advisory centers. There's a television, there are short clips that people can actually watch to understand, for example, how to use a particular fertilizer they have bought when is the best time to apply you know, those fertilizers, when not to, um, information on, on um, climate issues. There's a whole lot of information that will improve the way they actually do what they are doing because you know the extension work, the extension offices, they don't have that much reach to every single person. So these are also going to support the work that they are doing. So the expectation is that the interventions many of which are coming from the people themselves, will be sustainable in the long term because they originated from the people and they're responding to a problem that they face. So we have a number of scientific papers, we have a number of theses that the students have generated, we have policy briefs and so forth. But I think what is more important is the awareness that has been raised in the area, not only among the farmers and farmers groups and women's groups we've interacted with, but also with the youth. So hopefully we'll have a new generation of farmers, of young people who are maybe ending up as politicians, decision makers, who really appreciate the impact of climate change on their lives and how they can sustainably accommodate those changes. Because we focus so much on capacity building, not only of our students, but of local indigenous on site. We expect them to grow. We expect the students who have done their MPhil to go on to do a PhD if they want to stay in academia. Those who did their PhD will be going to work in other universities or as researchers. In one case, somebody has seen the possibilities that exist in the shea butter business after their masters, they are thinking of they should go into commercial shea butter uh, production, but using the indigenous knowledge plus modern techniques to have a better product, which will com com uh, command a higher sale value. Ideally, what I would want is the government of Ghana, through the decentralized bodies like Agric Extension and so forth, to carry on the sort of activities that we are doing 
or use the results of the research that we have come up with to respond to the challenges that people have in the field.